What up, players? Warbots tail up in this mode. Welcome to my Project Dwarves day number five. And as you can see, I spray primered all of my dwarves. My process when I have to do a batch like this, and even when I have to do single models, what I found is the easiest is that I have blue latex gloves that you can pick up from any, um, you know, department store or whatever. And I put one of those gloves on and then I hold it in my left hand while my right hand uses my spray primer. And that way I can turn, turn the model in all sorts of different directions and get good coverage over the whole area. The type of spray primer that I use is this Duplicolor Sandable Primer. And I use a dark gray because it gets a really good a really good even base. It's matte, so that means it's not shiny like glossy primer. So it's not gonna look like your your chaos black. It's gonna have a smooth, even finish and it also, what it does is, if you base your models beforehand, like I do now, for some, some of my models, then it it sticks the, the basing materials together and it kind of adheres it to the surface of the model. So that's really good. As you can see, here's a crossbow dwarf about to enjoy a nice frothy mug. And he's very happy because he got his primer on. And it's... It's, it's a really great way to, to do a, a whole bunch of models, but it did take me some time going holding each figure one by one and getting all the angles and, and whatnot, but got those done. I also started work on my cannon. I just held it by the barrel like this and just dry brushed it, both gun metal all over it. And once it's dry, I'm gonna hold it from the back, dry brush the the front of the barrel and then I'm gonna get to work on the brass bits all the cogs and gears and then I'm going to give it a wash and that should be it for this guy maybe like a little highlight I use some liquid green stuff on the seam of the cannon on the right side because the seam was really obvious it's still kind of obvious but it, it, was, it was really bad earlier so I'm gonna see how it looks with the metal on. If I need to shave it down or if I need to add a little bit more liquid green stuff, then I will do that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you all to my painting desk where I have some test models done and I wanna get your opinion on them. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at three models today. A two-handed axe bearer here over on the left, a hammerer in the middle, and a crossbow armed dwarf on the right. So I want to get your opinion on what you think of these completed models. First I'll show them all together and then we'll go individually one by one. So here are my test models that I did up and as you can see I'm going for a dark green, dark red unifying theme across all of them and the crossbow armed dwarves are going to be separated by a blue, bluish tone mixed in. So some of them are going to have blue sleeves, some of them are going to have blue hems or uh, blue head guards for their helmets, but the different color for that is going to be blue. For the combat dwarves, close combat dwarves, it's mainly going to be reds and greens. So now let's take a look at each one, one by one, and you can let me know what you think. The two-handed warrior, two-handed weapon wielding warrior, is put him on my my high-tech turntable and as you can see <laughs> the uh, dwarf is has a brown cape I think I'm gonna arm I'm gonna paint any of my warriors with capes that are double-handed warriors I'm gonna paint them with a uh, brown dirty really functional not too decorative capes to uh, just give them a, a, a little bit more of a feel of the the uh, lower, not lower class, but the more um, practical armed dwarves. And um, as you can see, there's not too much gold and bronze highlighting. The helmet is almost all in bare metal. The axe has a little bit of bronze gilding and detailing, or uh, gold. I use dwarf bronze, so it, it achieves the same effect. But overall, you know, he's very practical dwarf, uh, very, very hardy, very, not very 
ornate or decorative. Now let's go to the hammerer. The distinction I wanted to make, and you'll see it more with the finished units, are that they're a lot, they've got a lot more gold decorating their arms and their armor, their weapons and their armor. So like the helmet has gold detailing, the wings are, are all gold detailed and, and with the gold trim and the faceplate is all in gold and even their, their clasps on their beards and their, their decorations are all gold where as this guy has like the banding on his, on his uh, arms, his armbands are silver with gold detailing, his, this clip on his beard is silver with gold detailing, he's only got this one gold clasp, this other hammer dwarf has gold gold everywhere on his beard and everywhere uh, on his on his hammer and on his hat or his helmet he's also got green trim to tie him into the to the uh, rest of the army and I've seen armies where they use like a whole lot of different colors and even though they're all muted colors they're not too bright it, it just looks kind of strange to me so I'm gonna keep green and red the prominent color and um, I think that'll that, that should look good, except for my crossbow dwarves, which are also using uh, this blue color. So shadow gray makes a great muted blue. It doesn't pop and doesn't distract from the rest of the paint job, I think. Here's the uh, double-handed weapon for if they engage in close combat. Also, I decided to give this guy gold, uh, not gold, but real bone horns. And I think that makes him a little bit different than the close combat two-handed dwarf, a uh, two-handed weapon armed dwarf. He's got a, th their helmets are just a little bit different because the two-handed axe guy has, has metal on his helmet, like you can see. So less likely to, to, to shatter or break in combat. This one's a little bit more decorative, a little bit more able to be worn from in, in the back ranks without, you know, likely likelihood of damage. The crossbow is so fun. I've never painted a dwarf crossbow before, but all the cogs... Sorry about that, don't know what happened. All the um, cogs on the crossbow I painted in this dwarf bronze color and it really pops. I also painted out some details like the like these bands on the bottom for the other hand rest. I also gave the crossbow bolt some dwarf bronze on the edge, on the ends. And um, yeah, so so here's my crossbow armed dwarf. For the crossbow armed dwarf and for the two-handed axe wielding dwarf, I gave them both eyes and kind of ruddy looking cheeks, red looking cheeks and nose. A little bit of a flush to them just because they're, um, they're dwarves and they drink a lot and they're stuck underground and I think it's, I think it's pretty cool and it's, it's better than just having uh, pink, soft-looking flesh. Gives them a, a more hearty, rugged look. The eyes are quite difficult to paint just because they're so close to the rim of the helmet. You have to watch out, especially when you're putting in the, the eyeballs, but I think I did a pretty decent job with that. Yeah, so let me know what you think of the, the, the models that I painted up. For their bases, I tried to paint like they were in a part of a dwarf hole that is attacked by dwarf, uh, by um, orcs and goblins or night goblins and skaven so there's a lot of raiding and destruction and some of their their statues are crumbling their golden statues or or they're you know maybe they're in a part of a dwarf hold where there's uh, un, unexplored amounts of gold so so there's like the bases to break up the the, the grays of the bases just have little bits of gold on them which i painted in shining gold and i think they're a cute little distraction to, to look at when you're looking at the at the model. My goal is that when somebody from across the table will see my model, he will see uh, the colors of obviously of the model first, and then notice the base work and the little the little details. It's all about the details. I like putting details on my guys. So um, yeah, let me know what you think. This is all I've done for my project dwarves for day five. I believe and um, oh I also have to make a special 
a special mention now that we're coming to the end of this video. Um, if you can give me a second to look on my computer. Um, yeah, Man of War Gaming is going to be joining the painting challenge. Ooh, shh, don't text me, I'm busy. Man of War Gaming is going to be joining the, the painting challenge in January when um, when he's going to be joining in with the Empire and Orcs army. So 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 best of luck with that. Thank you for for joining the painting challenge and. Austin from Brush for Hire is also joining in the painting challenge with a bunch of War Machine stuff. So check those guys out. Brush for Hire put a, a video response in my day four video. Check out his stuff. Go support him. Subscribe to him. But um, yeah, if you want to join in this painting challenge for the month of November or just you know for 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 anything, just for yourself to to paint up a unit or even a whole army of stuff that you haven't gotten to, then then I, I highly encourage you to join in, join the fun, um, post up comments, or, or better yet, post up a video response so that we can keep track of your progress along with mine. And we'll keep trying to encourage ourselves to, and each other to, you know, complete the work because I think it's, it's really fun. I'm having a blast doing these test models. I can't wait to get into the rest of the regiments. And um, yeah, so have a great day, everybody. And um, don't forget to leave me some, some comments and hit that like button before you go. And I'll see you in the next one.